Hello, welcome back to another episode of The Summer of Me. Um, I am so excited today. We have Dr. Jake on the podcast. Dr. Jake is your official title, right? Yeah. Mm. But right now we almost have to trigger ourselves into rest mode and we do that through meditation, yoga, prayer, art, listening to music, taking a hot shower, going for a walk. Mm -hmm. um, those are all ways that we're like now triggering our nervous system that we're safe. Do you think it ever will go back to the other, like the way it used to be where it like where pe the baseline was health mode? Oh yeah, I'm sure there's cycles to everything. Yeah. I'm sure we will. How soon in our lifetime? I don't know. <laughs> the I mean, cycles of these things are pretty big. Because it's so true. Like we, I, there's very few people I know that like live in that like meditative, just like <laughs> life is good, baby. Like most yeah. people are like, I got a million things on my brain. I've got so much going on. Like I'm stressed about this. I'm sick this way or whatever. Well, I mean, I, I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen the transformation uh, in my own life. And like, I still am prone. I can be stressed, mm -hmm. but not like I used to. I was like a stress ball. So now would you say it's because you have awareness of like, you're in that mode and like, I need to get, I need to like get back to my health mode. Yeah. Well, part of it is not just awareness, like this mindfulness of understanding what, what am I experiencing at the moment and how do I feel about it? Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing to ask yourself from time to time. Like, what am I actually experiencing? How do I feel about it? Because a lot of the stress that we're experiencing right now is not the present moment. Mm. Most of the stress, like the stress pile that stacks up is past experiences that are unresolved. And consciously, you might think, like, what, what am I going to have for lunch today? But your subconscious is still trying to solve all these problems. Mm. And those are the things that gets triggered. So something in your environment that's, quote, unquote, like triggering or agitating or frustrating it's not necessarily that thing. It's the attachment to that, that pattern that you, that your subconscious recognizes from the past. So we call these CMO patterns in the technique. It's like a subconscious, uh, emotional memory override subconscious where it is. Emotions and memories are how you have access to it. So something happens and it can be something as simple as like a smell mm -hmm. that like you trace back to an experience in your life, or it could be like a song. And like, this reminds me of my high school boyfriend or whatever, right? And you can like feel a change in your body from that. Yeah. So that's a good example of a SEMO pattern. It's like something happens, your senses pick it up. It's connected through emotion to a specific memory in your life. And then your body goes, we're not safe. And it could just be like a smell. Wow. Or sound or anything like that. And your body's like, this is what it is. So like the usefulness of this system would be like, if your ancestors that are hunting, hunting and gathering, like walking through the woods, looking for food, but kind of having a, you know, a nice casual time, hear a twig snapping sound and they look over and they see a bear coming at them. Mm -hmm. Well, if they can survive that encounter, it could be years later walking through the woods, kind of forgot about that bear, but you hear that sound and your, your mind goes, this is a bear. Not remember that time there was a bear charging us wow. your nervous system because it wants to become more efficient with surviving. Okay. It makes associations with stresses. And so it says this sound is bear actually. And so you could be like, this song is rejection <laughs> for me. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden your nervous system's like, we're not safe again. And so wow. all of those triggers, this is the good news. Yeah. All of those this triggers. Is blowing my mind. This is blowing your mind. All of these triggers are healing opportunities okay so when all, all my clients do and other people pursuing this type of healing journey understand that when the nervous system gets activated in this way that's an opportunity to relearn and experience pause there for a second how do i cognitively know like that i'm how would i address that like how would how do i know that that's something that's triggering me like it's just in a, like a awareness level well that comes from like the practice of mindfulness is understanding okay. and there's a certain like cues in your body so for me um if i get triggered in a way i'll notice like more labored breathing that's subtle like yeah. labored breathing is like borderline panic attack and I, i've been there i've had those yeah but for now it's just like noticing like shorter more shallow breaths or agitation in my gut yeah or i'll notice like a blood flow change I can feel it like in my face because blood flow is changing when you're in stress so I'll feel something different in my cheeks or like behind my eyes mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll be like oh interesting you know whereas before it'd been like oh no I don't want yeah. this to be happening and now it's like oh interesting mm -hmm. something happened make a note of this well yeah it's like this is an opportunity to heal okay and it's really cool like I have 
my wife who's supportive of this too and she could say something or look at me a certain way and that like gets me triggered Mm -hmm. and it's not her fault and it's not personal it's just that's tied to something that could have been an ex or even my mom or whoever like when I was in trouble Mm -hmm. and it's like she's now invited into this it's like interesting like that just upset something like I feel a change in my body and she doesn't have to take it personally now and she's within you know well within her her means to do that if she wants to but she doesn't have to it's just like invited in and so here it is like the file got opened essentially and now we can update it just like a software update on your phone it's like we have access to the the application and now there's like a potential update and it's like do you want to install this update right now it's like i would so you can connect that old programming that's now running into something that's healing. So and you that's could go, what you're, I mean, that's your practice. That's what I do in connection. sessions. Yeah. So in sessions, we can just find something that's playing in the background. But in real life, it's like you kind of do have to wait till something gets opened up or activated. Uh, and then you could do the healing work, which is why I don't get upset when that happens now. It's like, oh, interesting mm-hmm. and cool. This is great. <laughs> I, get to, I get to do to, some work be right better. now. Yeah. Because on your own, you kind of have to wait for something to, to, to show you. Mm-hmm that there's something there in a session with me we will just go find it you yeah. don't have to like you can be having the best day of your life feeling totally peaceful joyful and grateful get on the table and be like this is what you're ready to heal right yeah. now and it's not upsetting if you're wondering like am i going to be like triggering and, and like crying like like kendra <laughs> the answer is most likely not but it's possible i'm a crier i don't know I, I was crying all morning this morning. I, I don't know if it's age. I don't know what it is, but like I am, I, I cry very easily. So maybe that's just <laughs> well, my experience. It takes a lot less for me these days. I think being a parent kind of like softens you. Yeah. Just like, man, lock it up. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't take much. Uh, but yeah, it's not like dramatic. We're not trying to like poke the bear. It's, you might be able to think I'm maintaining the emotion that I, that I was before, but the body's now activated. And we yeah. can update it without you really having to feel your emotions at all. So you're just basically like rewiring things and saying like, okay, yeah. when you hear this, it doesn't mean this. Like now this is what it means. Yeah. So in a session, we'll connect it to a very specific emotion that, mm-hmm. that your body needs, that your body's indicating you built an aversion to that you need to start embracing in your life. But if you're out on your, on your own doing this healing work, it's safe bet to connect Uh, a past experience to gratitude forgiveness or love love being the most i would say powerful healing frequency but gratitude sometimes just easier to access how can you tell like what you're like you said your body's like searching for that or has an aversion to that emotion like what like what is it in the body like what if like is it like you can feel the tension is it like a can you literally feel the energy like what uh well uh in the technique the, the easiest way to describe it is I'm looking to see how the body responds to me. So I'm putting like subtle information into the body through touch, movement, or intention, and the body's gonna respond. And so that's gonna, so what I'm doing in the session is really pattern recognition. Okay. Uh, and it's not that insane. You don't have to be like a special person to do that. I've trained a lot of people to do it. Like anyone could do it. Yeah. It just takes some patience. And interestingly enough, like trying to train doctors to do it's a little bit harder than other people because they're two in their head Mm -hmm. and to do this technique really requires a certain level of submission to the techniques and to the body's intelligence and doctors sometimes have the hardest time in a a submission type of technique where I have to like I think this is what's going on because of all my education and my Uh experience but the body's like actually no you're wrong (laughs) and you have to submit to that And so teaching doctors is actually pretty hard. So some of these techniques that we're doing, like lay people can do because there's no way to hurt people. So like no one has a problem with lay people being trained to do it Mm. because there's literally no downside. There's really no harm. It's like it could be. It's so gentle. Exactly. Is there like, would you say there's a way that you can prevent some of these patterns or prevent some of this like triggers or whatever you want to call them? Like. Um, like prevent having these like SEMO programs that I talked about. Yeah. And uh, just like you would have to remove yourself from <laughs> life as you know it. Like no, the answer is no. Relationships, yeah. Um, stress at all, and see, 
in the, here's the really important thing is you do not want to remove yourself from stress. Mm -mm. Stress is really important in order to be healthy. So stress isn't good or bad. It needs context. Elaborate so on that. Cause I remember this conversation we had and I thought it was brilliant. All right. So, um, stress is the acting stimulus that leads to either growth or like reinforcement, strengthening, becoming more robust. Mm -hmm. So for example, like you have bone density that you have simply because you've spent your life resisting the force of gravity on your body. And so the stress of gravity has encouraged your body to reinforce itself, to be stronger. And that's why people, you know, astronauts in the international space station can only be up there for so long because their bone density starts to go away. Mm. Um, so that's the type of stress, but also like so that's physical stress, biochemical stress, for example, like plants, um, are actually quite challenging on your body and some plants are more than others. Like some plants are more toxic than others. Like kale, for example, you'd say, is that healthy or not? Well, it's pretty high in what you'd call plant toxins like oxalic acids, which are pretty difficult for your body to deal with. But there's a case to be made that the reason humans are so biochemically robust, like we can handle a lot of things, like you can only give your pet cats certain types of food. Mm -hmm. But humans, we can handle quite a bit because we're pretty good at dealing with toxins. And so having to deal with toxins, so the principle in biology is called hormesis, which essentially means that which doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Hmm. Isn't that a Kelly Clarkson song? I'm sure it is. Somebody. <laughs> I'm sure it is. So you wanna stress yourself appropriately and what that does is it encourages a positive change in your body if it's hormetic stress. There's such a thing as distress, which is primarily destructive, but that also requires context, like the situation, and also requires like the system being stressed. So take, for example, exercise. Like if I'm lifting weights appropriately, I'm trying to get stronger, like I'm doing a program that's right for me, technically it's damaging to my body. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm walking out of the gym, I'm weaker than I was walking into the gym because it's creating all these like micro injuries in my ligaments, my bones, my muscles. But what that stress does is then encourages and facilitates the reinforcement, the strengthening of those systems that just got damaged. Cause your body's like, that was crazy. Like, mm -hmm. We need to get ready for that. If mm -hmm. that happens again, kind of a thing. Uh, but that's an exercise that's appropriate for me. And I should say it's not the stress that makes you stronger. Like the weightlifting doesn't make you stronger. It's the recovery period where you actually get stronger. But the stress in the gym is the stimulus for the growth. Got it. Okay. Um, but it also has to do with stressy. So like the program that's right for me and my size, my frame, you know, my, my history is not gonna be right for say like my mom. Mm -hmm. So my exact workout program that stress is probably distressful for her. It'd be dangerous. Dangerous, right. Right. And for like an Olympic level athlete, the stress that I undergo in the gym wouldn't be stressful enough to facilitate any change for them. Right. So their threshold of stress goes way up. And that's, so that's the argument of like working out is make yourself more stress resilient. Got it. Right. And you could do that physically with physical stress, biochemically. And you can do that uh, mentally, emotionally too. Because mm -hmm. we all know like hormesis in emotional stress, we're, I think we're, I think we're more aware of that naturally. It's like being put into difficult s situations, like builds character over time. Yeah. That's so why you don't want your kids to live in a bubble. You don't want to remove them from stress. You want them to have appropriate stress in their life so they grow and mature, yeah. gain wisdom, gain context have for their grit. existence. A little grit. That's just stress resilience. Mm -hmm. So the ratio you kind of want to look at your life is. What's my stress capacity? Like, how much stress can I handle? Mm -hmm. And you do, you can build your capacity over time by hormetic stresses, so appropriate stresses in your life. And then you look at, all right, so here's my stress capacity. Now, what's my stress load right now? What's my stress burden? Mm -hmm. And you can look at it like this. So, I'll talk through this for people that are just listening. So, like, this water bottle is half full right now, and so if you're looking at the water as like the stress load and the and the bottle as the capacity. It's like I'm in good shape. So if something happens in my life right now, it's very difficult. I have like a, a capacity to adapt to what's happening. Because mm -hmm. that's kind of a definition of stress you can use. It's like something that's that forces you into adaptation. Like you can't ignore it. You can't stay the same. You're being forced to deal with it, okay? It's a pain in the ass. Well, it certainly can be, but also <laughs> you need it. And it's also some of the most exciting things about life too. Okay, stressful, okay, okay. like you're in a relationship. Yeah. 
be less stressful if you weren't. <laughs> you know what I mean? You Touché. did that willingly. All right, so so I have like reserve here. So this is why I would say like this would be an example of health. Like I can handle more stress. Something happens, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are walking around stressed to the brim and you add a drop in there, you're getting s spillage. And that spillage you could say is like symptoms in life. Got it. Now symptoms could be physical, like the breaking down the body. They can be emotional. They could be relational. It could be in like your career, your work, your finances. There's a lot of different ways you can have health breakdowns. But that's with, as long as like your stress capacity exceeds the stress burden, you're probably doing great. Now, why, we, why I do the work that I do is because the stress buildup here, and then, by the way, it all goes in the same thing. So like your physical stress, your biochemical stress, your, your emotional. Your body So when I'm under like really heavy stress in my life and I've been through seasons like of immense stress, I'm not about to go like do CrossFit, which I like doing CrossFit, but in seasons of my life, it's like, I'm already stressed enough. I don't need to be pushing my body to its limits. But what would you say then like when people are like, that's my, that's my, um, my vice. Like that's like, that's what helps me de-stress. Well, totally. Exercise is the ultimate drug. If you could put it in pill form, like that's the mm. trillion dollar pill. However, I've done sports chiropractic work. Like I've worked on a lot of athletes, like using training at a high level to manage your emotions is a great way to be injured. And I've worked on those athletes that are like, I can't, I'm like, you have to fix me so I can get back out there because I'm a mental mess <laughs> You got bigger problems. because I can't man. work out. And so that's the other problem with using exercise as your, as your mood stabilizer primarily. It's like a really great positive way to be healthy. Again, I, I highly recommend exercise for everyone in resistance training. It's just, you can still do CrossFit. Say if you're like really stressed, you can just um adapt to the programmed workout you don't mm -hmm. have to push yourself that hard so using this same analogy with like a water bottle basically i think one of the things that i hear a lot from people is like i'm you know i'm going i i my husband all of a sudden says i want a divorce or something you unless you're proactively managing like your stress level so that you're working towards that like you, at some point like you might already be up to here and like then somebody dumps this on you and you're like oh holy shit like i didn't even expect this or came you know you didn't choose that or it came out of nowhere or whatever what do you do well something that i think is really important to be doing now so even before that happens you can do this as this is happening too mm -hmm. but for the people listening that are like i'm actually in pretty good shape right now do this work now while you can so yeah, in this illustration of this water bottle like your physical stresses, your biochemical stresses are all more, I would say, present time oriented. Yeah, physical stress, biochemical stress, more present time oriented, meaning you're dealing with the stress of like right now. Like if you are skateboarding with your kids later today and you like sprain your ankle, that is going to take time to heal, but you're not going to deal with the physical stress of that a year from now. You're dealing with some of the stress that's still present, like the stress, the pain in your ankle is like the healing process, the inflammation the tissue, like repair and stuff like that, that you're feeling, but it's really present time. Same with biochemical stress. Like if I go eat McDonald's after this, that's biochemically stressful to my body. And it's going to have to adapt to it, but like, I'm not dealing with that a year from now. Like sure. My body's going to have resolved that. So what happens in your, your overall stress load is like your emotional stress stacks over time. Got it. And so some of the stress that's playing in the background could be the exactly what was going on when you were three or four, eight years old. 28 years old, whatever that is. And so starting to offload those stresses is really a good way to, I guess, shrink or minimize the yeah. overall stress burden that you carry around. It's like they don't have expiration dates. No, and they, they're there until you, you resolve it. To and some of them out. go unresolved forever and you're fine. I would say most because most people don't do this work. So I'd say most people yeah. <laughs> carry it their whole lives and they experience chronic health issues and breakdown and interesting uh, so the techniques like see a practitioner practitioner like me there's over a hundred like certified what's your title officially my title like what like if somebody were searching for somebody like you like what would they so what, what would they search for um what I do is not broadly found because my mentor the one who teaches this protocol you kind of have to know him okay got it so um, like a pioneer oh for sure but there's like EMDR is a common one that you can you can be exposed to. Okay. A lot of counselors can do EMDR or NET is another good technique. 
a lot of like somatic healing. You're just looking for people that are like, trauma informed, understand how experiences get held in the body. Got it. And there's a lot of that out there. I know some people are now doing things like uh, psychotropics to expose things that's being held internally that they don't consciously have access to. So they'll take like a psych, go do like a psychotropic type of either ritual ceremony or something in a clinical setting. Okay like ketamine or, or ayahuasca, psilocybin, things like that, so they can actually see what's kind of going on. They get exposed to it that way. I'm not against that. I just don't think you have to do that. Yeah. Uh, so what you're doing is trying to expose yourself to that which is going on so th or that which is being held internally as conflict. And that's why I get kind of excited if something kind of triggers me, if I have this activation right now in my life, because it doesn't happen as much as it used to. I think yeah. when it was like my whole life, it's like, ugh. <laughs> Yeah. again <laughs> or yeah. more but right now it's always like oh cool interesting i'm triggered right now and then what you can do is explore it with curiosity so gaber mate is this really brilliant researcher psychologist right now and he created something called um what does he call it compassionate inquiry where instead of being like oh no this again it's like interesting i wonder what's going on and you start just being very gentle with yourself and exploratory like, what was it exactly that set me off there? Mm -hmm. What is it connected to? Do I have older memories of these experiences before? Well, and I think, too, like, not not thinking that things are just a coincidence. It's like, you're not stressed and your stomach hurts. That's just, like, nine times out of ten, that's probably not a coincidence. Like, if there's, like, for me now, I know enough, like, with my body that I know, like, if my jaw is tight and my stomach hurts, I have a bigger issue, like, I got to handle. Like, I have a, a, something deeper going on. Yeah, that's just communication. Mm -hmm. So your body's informing you, like, hey, you need to look at this. There's something going on you're not addressing. So we're giving you signals right now. Yeah. So you know there's an issue that needs to be addressed. And people ignore that a lot. Yeah, well, we treat symptoms as the problem. But symptoms are all just communication. So if there's a symptom in your body, your body's telling you, like, there's something you need to look at differently. There's some action that you need to take. Or there's some change you need to make in your life. So all symptoms are communication. So resisting the symptoms is where we got ourselves in this chronic health issue. Because we're like, symptoms bad. How can we alleviate the suffering? And there's times and places to alleviate suffering for sure, just so you can show up in life, right? Yeah. It's like, I got a splitting headache and I have to go to work today mm -hmm. and I have to focus at work. So like take the thing that helps you do that. I mean, there, there's cost to that, but you're doing risk reward. And sometimes like, it's worth it to me. Worth it, right. Take a night cool tonight. I need a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. I need to breathe, right? There's costs associated with it, but like there's costs with getting a bad night's sleep too. Right, exactly. So it's exactly. like, you do, you use what you need to do, but the alleviation of symptoms gets us in this chronic health issue. Because if you can just learn the lesson that the body's communicating, then the body harmony is restored or the synchronicity is restored. The body's back into a, a more profound communication cycle where it's self-regulating and it's repairing as it goes. Mm. And so just trying to smush down your symptoms gets you into trouble. So for, for example, like anxiety, anxiety is a very common symptom. I think everyone experiences some level of anxiety. Some people it's crippling, but mm -hmm. some people it's just like happens sometimes. Great communication from the from the mind. It's saying like, hey, you need to pay attention to something. So anxiety for me is this invitation to kind of pause and say like, what's going on? Do I need to look at something? Do I need to take an action? Am I not taking care of some responsibility in my life? Mm. And sometimes it's just a trigger. It's an anxiety trigger based on a past experience, but you can still raise your awareness. But no matter what, what we're trying to do with anxiety, for example, is like dampen the signal. So it's like a smoke detector going off in Got your it. house at night. And I get it. Like if you're trying to sleep and a smoke detector is going off, it's like, I don't like this and I don't want this yeah. to be happening. But it's very possible that the smoke detector is not the problem, right? There's some yeah. other action that you need to take. And so it's alerting you and inviting you into an action that in this scenario is life-saving. Yeah. But um, that's what it is, communication. We're trying to say, like, you're going to a doctor to be like, doctor, how can you turn this alarm off? <laughs> that's yeah. really bothering and disrupting my life. And it's like, here's how you turn it off. Instead of, why is this going off? So that goes back to this compassionate inquiry. It's like, what's really happening here? And being able to, like, be compassionate with yourself really means being able to be present with yourself in suffering. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the root of the meaning of that word. And so if you can show yourself compassion, compassion ultimately becomes a fertilizer for growth and healing in your life. 
And resistance, this is a really important concept, like resisting an experience is essentially you latching onto it and gripping it when you're like, I do not want this to be happening anymore. And that's you latching on and kind of dragging it with you into the future. That's why a lot of people have these repetitive experiences where their life doesn't seem to change that much. Mm. It's because we're in resistance. But compassion and loving acceptance for yourself as you're dealing with something acts as a fertilizer for growth. So it's a real catalyst. So you don't have to stay in the same place. But if you're in resistance to it, you, you're going to have similar experiences over and over. But saying like, okay, this is from uh, like a tapping technique, emotional freedom technique. It's like, even though I'm experiencing this right now, I love, accept, and forgive myself. And so you go into this place of loving acceptance. You change the emotions that you're experiencing in that. You connect a loving acceptance feeling state to, say, a past wounding emotional state like rejection, fear, guilt, shame, etc. And that can start creating software updates for you all on your own without the need of a practitioner. So that's really healing. So if you feel triggered, you can start doing like tapping. You can do what's called the thymus thump. Tapping is a more complicated technique, but you can simply like tap on your breastplate essentially. So even though I'm experiencing this right now, I love and accept myself hmm. and try to feel loving acceptance. Don't just like keep it as an intellectual exercise. Really try to create that feeling state in your body. That could be really healing or you can do like a really good self-healing technique that I love. It's called Ho'oponopono. It's like an ancient Hawaiian healing technique. And when you're having this triggering experience, whether something very stressful in the present moment or like a memory came up, maybe a bad memory, maybe just a weird memory. Yeah. But it's like, all right, an in intrusive thought, a memory pops into my mind. You go, thank you. So you go right to gratitude. It's like, thank you for this opportunity to heal. Or thank you for this opportunity to see this through the eyes of love. And then you go into forgiveness. I'm sorry, I haven't done this before. And I forgive you. And then the last thing is like, and I love you. And so you connect into a lovingness and a loving relationship. And that can really be a powerful healing technique. That's really easy. So in, in the in Ho'oponopono, you just have to say, thank you. I'm sorry. And I yeah. forgive you. And I love you. And really try to feel those emotions. That's all you have to do. And you'd be surprised how powerful that is. Fascinating. Um, where can people find you if they want to learn more or reach out? Um, jakehyde.com. It's a pretty good place if you want to learn more we'll, about me. We'll put that in the show notes too if you scroll down. I'm on social media under Dr. Jake Hyde, DR Jake Hyde. Um, anyone right now, if you go to my website, you can schedule a complimentary conversation. Cool. Um, if you're listening to this like a year from now or two, maybe that's not true. Reach out to me another way. I'll still do it for you if you if you hear about me through this podcast. But yeah, just and you go do to virtual there. sessions, right? Uh, yeah, so I work with people right now all over the world, um, and people in person in the Nashville area. Okay. I've traveled at times different cities to like work on groups, but I don't yeah. have anything on the schedule right now for that. But I am open to that, and. Um, yeah, so see me if you're in Nashville. Reach out no matter what, though. Even if you're not planning on, you know, if like I don't know if I can do this kind of work long time, you can still try to reach out to me and have a conversation. It could be really helpful. Very insightful. Thank you for coming on the podcast. It's real, really my pleasure. Yeah. It's a real treat. It's so fun. We might have we might have you back. Maybe we'll do some Q and A or like if you guys have questions for Dr. Jake um, and want to send them to me, maybe we can have him back for another episode answering some like frequently asked questions or something like that. Yeah. But there's a lot um, more to talk about. There is so much more to talk about, and I swear every session I go to, I'm like, holy shit! Like I, <laughs> how did I miss that one? Um, so, anyways, thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Summer of Me. Thanks for listening to The Summer of Me. You can listen to episodes on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can watch on YouTube. Come hang out and follow my chaos on Instagram at Kendra for now. See you next time.